Nine signs your kidneys are crying for help. In this video, I'll discuss signs and symptoms your body shows when your kidneys are failing. Weak kidneys. Medically, we call this renal insufficiency when kidneys weaken and can't filter blood properly. This causes your body to show various signs and symptoms I'll discuss. Besides main signs, I'll give five tips to save and protect your kidneys. Following these tips greatly increases your chance of maintaining kidney health. So listen carefully. Remember I mentioned blood filtering? Kidneys also produce hormones like erythropoietin, which stimulates red blood cell production. This is key to one symptom I'll explain. The kidneys are crucial for our bones, vitamin D, magnesium, phosphorus, and bone health. Besides filtering toxins and meds, kidneys have many other vital functions. They also regulate blood pressure. Let's cover nine signs and symptoms. Then I'll share some tips. The first sign of weak kidneys is swelling. I'll focus on swelling in the lower limbs, particularly the legs. It can occur elsewhere too. Face, lungs, fluid buildup, aka water in the lungs or pulmonary edema. Why does this swelling happen? One key function is blood filtration and regulating body fluid levels called volemia. If the body can't properly eliminate fluids, it leads to swelling, mainly in the legs. Why am I highlighting the legs here? Because it's easier to see, unlike other areas like the lungs. So. That's swelling in the legs. Note that leg swelling can also be due to heart, liver, or thyroid issues, not just kidneys. But when legs swell, kidneys should always be checked. I'll explain later how doctors evaluate this. So it's important to watch till the end. The second sign of weak kidneys is feeling colder than usual. Why this increased sensitivity to cold? Interestingly, studies link it to anemia. Remember the kidney functions I mentioned? This is where the puzzle pieces fit. It's about erythropoietin production. If your kidneys aren't working properly, you might have anemia. This type of anemia, specific to kidney disease, shows normal red cell volume and color in blood tests. This is a medical sign I'm sharing with you here. Unlike iron deficiency anemia, which causes small red cells, microcytosis, or B12 slash folic acid issues causing large cells, macrocytosis, kidney disease anemia has the characteristics I mentioned, okay? So I'll note increased cold sensitivity, a change from your norm. We need to evaluate kidney function as well. The third sign of kidney failure is itching. It's quite an interesting symptom. You ask why I use that cover image pointing to a skin lesion? This could be due to excessive scratching leading to visible marks on the skin. People ask about this a lot, so here's the answer. See how the puzzle pieces fit together. Why does itching occur in kidney disease? When kidneys fail, urea can accumulate in the body. Excess urea in our blood can cause itching. There's another sign you might expect, pain, but I won't list it here. People often think, I'm in pain, my kidneys must be failing or having issues. But I'm not including pain here. Why? Pain could indicate kidney infection, like pyelonephritis or kidney stones. It can be severe. These situations can weaken kidneys, but they're not direct signs of weak kidneys. They're conditions leading to kidney failure or weakness, okay? So it's important to address this as well. Pain itself isn't a typical sign, but rather a symptom of conditions that weaken kidneys. Let's continue with our list. Number four is shortness of breath, discomfort, fatigue, or tiredness. You wake up tired for two reasons. Breathlessness, which can cause fluid buildup in lungs and mainly decreased red blood cell levels, lowering hemoglobin. What's that about? Well, kidneys stimulate red blood cell production through erythropoietin. If this process fails, it can lead to anemia. Anemia symptoms include nail changes and hair loss, for example. But I want to highlight fatigue and the decrease of red blood cell levels in the blood. Sign number five, another interesting one, is weight loss. Why? When toxins build up in our blood, the kidneys can't filter properly, causing nausea and vomiting. This could be another sign, but I'll focus on weight loss as it's more objective. This weight loss occurs due to reduced appetite, leading to fewer calories consumed. Studies show many people lost weight due to the disease's characteristics. Sign number six is hard to control high blood pressure. It's pressure doctors can't explain, requiring kidney function evaluation. 
Also, that controlled high blood pressure suddenly spiking, requiring more meds. This could be kidney-related. Kidneys regulate blood volume and fluid levels in our body. If kidneys fail, hard-to-control high blood pressure may indicate renal issues. It's either narrowed blood vessels or impaired kidney function causing this. So, often young patients with very high blood pressure or someone who's been on medication for years but was well controlled on just losartan for example suddenly lose control they might say i didn't do anything different i don't know what happened i didn't change my habits my weight's the same but it's out of control now that's a big red flag okay always evaluate high blood pressure i always check kidney function when diagnosing high blood pressure and periodically for patients with hypertension got it if it's hard to control with multiple meds then it's absolutely crucial to thoroughly assess kidney function for potential renal failure the seventh sign which you often ask about is a metallic taste like having metal in your mouth are you one of those who commented on this there are many many people so kidney changes can cause this, right? Weak kidneys, why? The toxins build up in our body, blood isn't filtered properly, and you may taste metal in your mouth. Sign number eight, waking up to urinate. Why is this a sign of kidney disease, of weak kidneys? As the day progresses, you tend to retain fluids, especially in your legs. Lying down helps return these fluids to the kidneys for elimination, as they couldn't during the day. One sign may be waking up to urinate. Even if you haven't had fluids before bed, this can be a sign of other conditions like diabetes, which I've mentioned before, or kidney issues. Weak kidneys can increase nighttime urination frequency. Got it? So always check your kidneys. Besides diabetes, kidney function needs evaluation too. Sign number nine is a change in urine. You might think, if my kidneys are weak, I'll urinate less. But no, the sign I'm highlighting here is foam in the urine. Why? This could indicate kidney damage. When kidneys are damaged, they release proteins in urine. It may signal kidney problems. So foamy urine needs investigation, okay? Now changes in urine volume aren't always present. Often kidneys will produce a normal amount of urine and the color too. Color relates more to density and water intake than disease. So foamy urine is the ninth sign of failing kidneys. Now what are five tips for kidney protection? If you haven't liked the video, Let's aim for 10,000 likes. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I cover diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, and hormones. If subscribed, hit the bell for notifications on new posts. Let's get to the five tips then. What are these tips? The first tip is about hydration. Four to six glasses of water a day spread throughout the day. Why am I talking about glasses? because last time I mentioned a specific amount, you asked me to convert it to glasses. So a medium glass, four to six glasses per day. But why is hydration so important? For several reasons. Remember when I talked about kidney stones? Hydration is a way to help reduce kidney stones and because the body functions better, plus many have conditions that increase dehydration risk like diabetes. High blood sugar levels can also lead to this issue. A simple tip that's free and can improve your health. Hydration. How many glasses of water do you drink daily? Write it in the comments below. If you like this glass tip or have a quantity to share, mention it here along with your city. Why do I ask for your city? I'm curious. We have viewers from Alaska to Atlantic Islands and I love knowing where you're from. I'll give a shout out to you and your specific city. The second way to protect your kidneys is by managing blood sugar levels. Did you know diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease? When I say leading, there are two main causes. I'll mention the other one later. Depending on the country, these diseases may swap positions. But diabetes is always first or second in causing kidney problems. Why? because high blood sugar levels damage the kidneys. It's one of the organs most affected by increased glucose. So it's the main culprit. Managing blood sugar is a key form of protection. I'll give more tips later, but let's continue our video. The third way to protect kidneys is controlling high blood pressure by avoiding excess sodium or salt. What's considered excessive salt and sodium? Who says 5G of salt or 2G of sodium daily? Studies show many countries consume double that. Daily excess can strain your kidneys. I'm not talking about one-time consumption. Some claim sodium isn't harmful. Of course not. We need salt and sodium to live, right? Excess is harmful, especially when routine. You're eating twice what you need regularly. That's when it becomes a problem. Studies show many people do this. A large part of the population, in fact. 
That's why we see higher blood pressure levels. Is, but monitoring blood pressure is a form of protection. Remember I mentioned diabetes alternating with another disease? Well, that other disease is hypertension or simply high blood pressure. It's a major cause of kidney problems. The fourth way to care for your kidneys is through routine exams. What are these essential tests for evaluating kidney function? It's creatinine. What is creatinine? Creatinine can estimate what percentage of your kidneys are working or functioning. Generally, this test has an upper limit of 1.2 for women and 1.4 for men, but this can vary. Remember, not every increase in creatinine indicates a disease. Those who work out and have high muscle mass may show increased creatinine. It's crucial to consider other tests too, but creatinine is a key routine test that can prompt more precise diagnoses. Another important test I want to highlight is the urinalysis. This test may be called a qualitative urine test, urine one, or simple urine tests. The name might vary by location, but it's the test where you pee in a small container at the lab, okay? Through this, we can analyze your urine composition. It checks for important markers like glucose. Detecting glucose in urine is crucial. It also includes protein markers. This marker appears even before the foamy urine sign I mentioned earlier. So, small amounts of protein indicating kidney issues can be detected through a simple urine test even before foam appears. I'll highlight these two tests. Their first line screening, routine exams to detect early kidney diseases. Another test people often ask about is the 24 hour urine test. You take a bottle home, collect urine, then return it to the lab. This test is crucial, but it's not routine. Not everyone needs to undergo this exam. When a doctor suspects something else, like proteins in urine, they may request tests to quantify it. This could include kidney imaging, but it's not routine. I'll highlight those first two points I mentioned. The fifth way to protect your kidneys is to be careful with medications. One cause of kidney weakness is excessive medication use. I'm talking about uncontrolled use without medical supervision or prescription, which is very common. So be cautious about self-medicating. I want to emphasize being careful with self-medicating anti-inflammatories like nimesulide, diclofenac, meloxicam, ibuprofen, and ketoprofen. These medications can reduce kidney filtration rates, potentially leading to impaired function and kidney failure. Now you might be thinking, oh, this must only affect long-term users. Well, here's the catch. Studies show that kidney function can be impaired after just five or more days of use. So be cautious with anti-inflammatory drugs. Remember, I'm talking about use without medical supervision or proper evaluation. Don't just take medication thinking it's good for you when it could actually harm your kidneys. Now, I'll suggest a video addressing your question from last time. Can diabetics eat potatoes? You've seen that controlling blood sugar is one way to protect your kidneys. Are potatoes healthy for diabetics? I'll leave that video suggestion here for you to learn more about taking care of your health. Take care. See you next time.